Okay, so now we're going to talk about another example, and this one would be a more of a professional, full-time um, field worker, and they're out in the field, and we're going to actually uh, connect five different apps together in this one. We're going to have Pro, a configurable app. We'll use some data from Drone to Map, and then we'll uh, add Navigator and Workforce to this workflow as well. And this workflow is power pole inspections. Now, we might all, just like we might not all work for cities and counties that need to do restaurant inspections, we probably all of us here don't work for a place that does power pole inspections, but I think you can appreciate how these workflows and apps could support uh, workflows in your organization. So, Harry, let's see how these yes. apps work together. Okay, how many of you have a drone? Anybody? Okay, I will oh, not cool. tell the FAA on you two over here. Um, but drones are becoming a really, really popular way to collect technology. So as the drone is flying around, it's collecting things like image, imagery, video, LIDAR, and so forth. And this is a result of a drone flight that we did at Esri. And what you're looking at is several hundred pictures. So we have the drone, and we downloaded the data onto my laptop. But the problem is it still just lives on my laptop. So how do we take drone data and then share it with the rest of the organization in a way that can uh, find the best value out of it? Well, we do that with drone to map. So I've already downloaded and installed drone to map on my laptop. And within drone to map, we can create several different types of projects. We can create rapid projects to get digital surface models. Uh, we can create 2D mapping projects, 3D, and so forth. So we're going to create a 3D project using the drone data that we uh, flew earlier. So I'm simply going to hit the Create button, give this a name. And I'm just going to point to the folder that has all my images. So it's my asset inspection. You see 102 images. And then I'll add the other folder as well called Corridor. And now I have almost 300 images. Each one of these images has spatial location, a point associated with it. So when I hit OK, that's it. That was all in real time, by the way. Now, each one of these points represents a location of one of the images that were taken. And because we know the order that the point was taken in, we're able to create the flight path as well. Now, this is just a, a, a 2D view of this, but the drone was also in 3D because it was going up and down the pole. So by simply just clicking on 3D view, we can now see this data in the 3D context. And if I zoom in, here's the main power pole we can look at the different photos that were taken by the drone while it was flying around the power pole. So this, again, right now lives on my laptop. I've consumed the, the pictures and the data. It's in drone to map. I want to share it with the rest of the organization. The first thing I do is to adjust the processing options. It's within the processing options where you can determine what do you want to make. Do you want to make a point cloud, 3D mesh? Do you want to do ortho mosaics or DSM? So once you take the time to do this and fill out the properties, then you'll just hit apply and publish this. Now, it does take a little bit of time to process all that information, so I've already done that. And I've created services out of it. So if we look here now in ArcGIS Pro, which again is a 3D application as well, we'll see the exact same view of the data, except it's been used by everyone in my organization because it's a service. It's just out there, and everybody can consume it if they have permissions. So we, when we initially started building this demonstration, we thought we could just stop here. But we decided to just stretch our, our limits of, of app usage and create another app. And that app is called the Crowdsource Manager. And what we did is take a subset of those images, only the ones that were looking at the insulators, and did the, or created this app so we can do in the office field inspection. See, when you go out and you, you inspect a power pole and you send out a large crew, that's a lot of money. It can also be dangerous depending upon the topography that these uh, power poles are in. Some of them are up the sides of like steep cliffs. So to help reduce that um, cost and the potential risk, we built this app to do inspections in the office. So if I click on this blue point here, what, we can, what we'll be able to see is the image that was taken out in the field. And now when I expand it, 
I can inspect it, and we see that there is actually a dent in this particular uh, insulator. So because there's a dent, I'll edit the information to say that it needs to be inspected because there is an issue. And then I can come over and, and look at one of the other ones as well. And we'll inspect this uh, insulator, see if there's any damage. I don't see any big dents or anything. So we'll edit this to show that it is um, no, it has no issues. So we'll close that and hit save. So this is how we, in the, mind you, the this template is a configurable template, and it's available to you guys right now. You can use it. So we just did this for, you know, in the field inspections. So then we're like, well, okay, we did that. How do we send the field crew out there? So that's where we paired it with another application called Workforce Manager. So again, this is available to you guys today. So within Workforce Manager, I've created a project. Um, I'm going to show you the configuration of this project first so you understand how it was built. Um, first of all, there are 14 people who are part of this project because identity is extremely important. That's how you begin to share and collaborate this content. So knowing who is who is important. Um, it's made up of a couple of different web maps, a dispatcher map and a work order map. Um, we have different assignment types. So I've created one called an on-site inspection. So they have to go out and inspect that insulator or if they have to go back and recheck something. Um, again, here's a list of all the different users that are available to me in my organization. And it's under this advanced tab where a lot of the power happens. Because if I do this app integration, we've combined Navigator for ArcGIS with Workforce. So what that means is Navigator is seamlessly built in. We could have also done that with Collector for ArcGIS or Survey123. Uh, um, location tracking is turned on. It does a cookie crumb trail. Uh, a breadcrumb trail uh, every 30 seconds of anybody in the field using workforce. So that ability to track is there. So this is the, some of the things that I've done to set up this particular project. So let's look at it and see what it, it looks like. So you'll see that I have one red square on my map. The reason I have one red square is because this is that one uh, insulator that had the dent. So we've connected it into workforce. So when I click on that, I can see some of the properties of the date, the time, and I can create an assignment. So this will need an on-site inspection. I'm going to assign it to Adam. The due date is today, the time, let's see, 940. We'll make him work really fast. We'll say 10 o'clock. Um, I can put in the description, check out the insulator dent. Thank you. And I could attach another picture or anything like that and create assignment. So what's happening is that point has now been assigned to Adam, who's a field worker, and it's his job to go and inspect that power pole. So Adam. All right, thanks, Harry. So what you're seeing now is workforce up and running on the iPad here. Uh, you can see it says my to-do list is empty. I have no assignments. But if we wait a few moments, we should see the new assignment appear. Um, and so what it'll do is it'll come up and show me the information that Harry's provided. I can then accept that assignment and then actually do that assignment right here within Workforce. It will automatically show him back in the office uh, when I've done that and when I've accepted it and all that information. So all that communication is just being done behind the scenes automatically um, and we're able to get our work done faster. Come on, let's get it, uh, get it to refresh here. Oh, there it, is. there it is. So there's the on-site inspection required, just showed up. One critical assignment, it shows it's critical, so it's, uh, it's in red. So I click on it, and you can see it says, check out the insulator, insulator dent, thank you, and it's assigned by Harry, um, because it knows who he is, because he's logged into the application. And then if you see this box to the right of the name of the, of the, the task, with the arrow pointing up, I can click on that. Now this is because he checked the box that wanted to integrate workforce with Navigator. So it came up and it says, do you want to navigate to the assignment? And I say yes, and it automatically goes to Navigator, and then it finds the route from where I am to where the, the work is. And so if I hit Start Navigation, it's going to give me simple turn-by-turn -turn directions like we're used to. Starting route to August 5th drone flight, DSC-00096 JPG. Go north on Radcliffe Drive toward Birch Street. Turn right. 
in 0 0.4 miles. Okay. Turn left on. We don't need any more of that. But um, <laughs> you get the idea. So it's going to give me turn by turn directions. And then if I let it finish and actually get me there, it would then prompt me to say, click here to go back to workforce. So it's really easy to do without, with, uh, you don't really have to know what, when to go to what app. Um, the other thing is, too, is this will work with your street network if you want it to. So you don't have to use a commercial street network. So let's go back to workforce. And let's say I'm going ahead and I'm, and I'm there. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge this. And then I'm going to go ahead and start it. So I go ahead and I do my inspection. And I find out that the insulator is fine. It doesn't need to be repaired. So I tap here and I add notes. And again, I don't want to type. So I'm going to say, the insulator is fine. No maintenance needed at all. There it is. And then I'm going to hit Finish. And no more to-do list. And it's gone back to Harry. OK, so now I'm back in the office monitoring what's going on in real time. And you can see that the square that was red is now a circle that is green because it's been completed. So I can look at that and um, see what uh, Adam had said about it. The insulator is fine. No maintenance is needed at all. And we can just continue moving on for our day. So what, the reason we built this demonstration was to show you pairing apps together can really help you throughout an entire workflow. So we started off with, with a drone flying and collecting a bunch of pictures. We then used drone to map to take those pictures and create a service out of all that data that can be used throughout the entire organization. We then use one of our configurable apps, the crowdsource manager, to use it to do in the office inspection instead of being out in the field. We then used workforce for ArcGIS to assign the different inspections to the people in the field. And then we ended up with Adam, who was in the field doing those edits. And what was really awesome is virtually real time. I mean, all this stuff we just showed you was live. It's happening in a matter of seconds. So I can see where my field crews are, what they're doing, and what type of assignments they've been um, given virtually in, in, in real time. And we could have even added operations dashboard so that the manager could have seen everything that was going on as well, right? Mm -hmm. So um, no code was written. Nope. All None of them whatsoever. integrated together, and you got access to all of them all right yep, now. Yep, exactly. Oh, everything we showed you have yep. uh, access. Uh, drone to map and navigator. Drone to map and navigator are additional costs, but other mm -hmm. than that, you got everything you would need right now. OK. All right, so field operations review. Um, we can pair apps together. Again, they, they support all five of those phases of field work, from planning, coordination, navigation, capturing, and monitoring. Um, we can support both casual mobile users and your dedicated mobile users. These new apps have new capabilities and opportunities. No coding required. Um, so again, find those folks in your office that are doing mobile work, especially the ones doing paper. Get some devices in their hands. Um, and then again, don't just collect data with an app. Look at implementing these other apps to support more of the workflow and make that work more efficient.